them to go to work and put a brick or two in place every day, or else they don't continue to deserve the support that got them to where they are in the first instance. We have to do two things. We have to make sure we're nominating the right people. We have to make sure that once they're elected, they stay true to the commitments that they made when they ran. The people we elect have to work in that world, and it is a world which requires compromise, coalition, working with others, sometimes working with people you might not always like. That we get from them the commitment you should seek of any politician that you're going to support, and that is the commitment to work toward the realization of your values. And they're very upset about the fact that some people don't think they should. One of them confronted me and said, this could result in a democratic victory. I said, that would be my second best outcome. The best outcome would be a conservative victory. The second best outcome would be a democratic victory because what you need is a lesson in the fact that it's time to stand up. Steve said there's no need to rebrand the Republican Party. There isn't. There is a need to reclaim the brand that the people who sold it out destroyed. Um, we've had an individual who's scheduled to be on a um, event this afternoon who's a documentary filmmaker who's kind of gone south on us. Uh, he's been disruptive with uh, some uh, interviews. Uh, he was disruptive with me in the lunch line here. You know, um, we believe in free speech. There's no, no question we believe in free speech, but this is a private gathering, and free speech at this event is a privilege, it's not a right. And so I have to say, um, we're asking this individual to not participate in the conference this afternoon because we think that he's going to take away from the other speakers and their ability to communicate with you about really important things. So uh, we're, uh, asking the, the, we're asking this fellow to leave and he's disrupting right now. And would you please, would you please call the, the Newport Beach like police? Really? Is story? Please, please call the Newport Beach because this is because the real story is, all I did was ask David Keen, I just asked David Keen some simple questions that he will not answer about, for instance, why he gave $2,000 to our inspector, why he said inaccurate things about Sarah Palin, and they called the police, he threatened to hit me, he me profanities, I was respectful, David Keen is a sellout, and everyone here ought to know it. what's really happening here. That's fine. So just so you know what really happened, you'll see the video on the internet. The whole thing is going to be very interesting. What he is saying You know is what? Why don't we just go ahead and go to the other lie. event? Because we're ready An to go home. Lie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Get out of my space. Based upon what? You have no authority. You just bump me for the third. You just bump me again. Really? I'm gonna go get my property. Yeah, I'm gonna go get my property. I'm gonna go get my property. Well, you look mean. Why are you so mean? I gotta come all the way from life with my wife this morning to come and deal with you. Right. Well, I'm Mr. Mean. Professional. I didn't call. You're not to enter this room. I'm going to go get my property, sir. And you need to we take will, your hands off of me. We will address your property you in a separate manner. You need to take your hands you, off of me. I'm going to go get my property. <laughs> so would you like me to arrest, have you arrested for assault? You just assaulted me. Take my number, take my card. <sighs> Thank you. We'll have the rest forwarded to you, whatever address you like. This is not like. my stuff. This is my stuff. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. The exit's this way. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, right this I'm, way. I'm exiting, sir. Thank you. Right this way. I will not be leaving your side until I see the vehicle off the truck. Go block right. either in the back of my police car. Well, you have no authority to do anything. I have all the authority in the world. You are on private property and you are trespassing. Based on what am I trespassing? You have been. Right. It's been announced <laughs> to me by the Western Sea Pact that you are no yeah. longer welcome. Oh, where's which so makes this, you? So I'm a, I have a excuse me. Which a makes credential. you no longer welcome at the Radisson in Newport Beach. Okay. Thank so you, you have no longer 
involved okay. with the Western CPAC. You are now right. involved with the Radisson, and you are trespassing. Okay, and, uh, and look what I'm doing. I'm there leaving. It is. <laughs> but I will. I know you're having a great time with this. Right. Well, let's go. Can I have your card? By I will get it to you once we're outside. Um, look, can I have your card, please? No. I, well, I'd like uh, Johnny right Perato. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you assaulted me. I did not assault you, sir. You yes, bumped you into me. That's the it's all on camera. You bumped into me. Yeah, we'll see the camera. Yep. Okay. Thank we, were, you. we were seem to have been walking to the same location at the same time. Uh huh. This is funny. Let's see if you can't find a spot with Michael Moore. Glad you're a fan of the old radio show. <laughs> but, um, don't mind you. you got nothing to worry. You got nothing to worry about here. I'm okay. leaving. Appreciate she's, it. She's just getting the poster. And Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. You take care. Wow, that was uh, more interesting than I ever could have possibly imagined. So let's review. Uh, I asked David Keene a few very respectful and relevant questions in an interview he agreed to do. He walks away threatens to hit me, uses profanity, and never answers the questions. Then I'm told that I'm off the panel I was scheduled to speak on this afternoon, and that the police are coming to make sure that I'm removed from the premises. Well, they thought better of the police idea during lunch, but then at the end of lunch, and this really blew my mind, they call me out. Jim Lacey, the guy who's running this affair, but obviously he's being, uh, his strings are being pulled by David Keene, calls me out lies about what happened, which you just saw on videotape, and I have no choice but to try to tell the crowd there what really did occur. I doubt they heard me, but hopefully they've just seen this video. I have to tell you, I'm really kind of stunned and saddened by all of this, and I think what we've seen is the personification of what I've always suspected about the American Conservative Union and CPAC. Their entire mentality is, if we like you, if you pay us, if you're friends of ours, then you get the prime speaking engagements and the endorsements. If not, if you ask us questions we don't like, you get pulled from a panel for no apparent reason and the police get called on you. This is the kind of behavior I expect from liberals, not conservatives. But if you look at David Keene's record, it's kind of hard to tell whether he really is a conservative. And that speech he gave, talking about not selling out and being a true blue conservative, wow, holy hypocrisy, Batman. This has really been a learning experience. And you know what? It's quite possible that this is the end of my position or my place, if I have one, in the conservative movement. And I think I'm okay with that. Because if David Keene is a guy who's a leader in the conservative movement, that's a movement I don't want to be part of. Thanks for watching.